All right, so guys, I thought I'd make a video going over what locking hubs are, how they work, and why they're nice to have in some situations. So basically, the way that the power is distributed through this vehicle is as follows. You have your engine right there. You can see the oil pan of it connected to your transmission, that yellow-ish colored object. So the engine creates power through combustion, sending that through the crankshaft of the motor, which is uh, transferred through the main shaft of the transmission, through whatever gear range you're in. Then it comes back to this large unit right here. Now that is called a transfer case, and as the name implies, it transfers power from the transmission and distributes it to your axles. Now normally when you're driving in two-wheel drive, it is only sending power back the rear drive shaft. If you shift the truck into four-wheel drive, it is distributing that power to the front drive shaft. If you uh, put the transfer case into low range, it is using gear reduction to multiply the torque generated by the motor through the gears in the transmission through the lower gears in the transfer case, then out to your axles. That gives you that low range uh, when you shift it into low. So if we're following this pattern, crankshaft, main shaft through the transmission gear, through the transfer case gear. Now if we're in four-wheel drive, it's going to send that down the front drive shaft, which you can see right there, into this large object over here, which is the center section of your axle housing. Now the center section has a ring and pinion gear in it, and basically what it's doing is taking that um, rotational force coming down the drive shaft through the pinion gear and then turning it onto the ring gear which is then turning your actual shafts sending power down this tube out through this little nub right there that is the actual axle shaft that piece in the center now right now I don't have a hub in here and as you can see if I turn the wheel or the rotor rather the axle shaft does not turn the hub right here rotates but the shaft itself is not spinning. So this is where you would have your locking hubs. Now locking hubs are not a locking differential. That's an entirely different thing, which I'm not going to cover in this video. All a locking hub does is connect the center axle shaft, this piece right there, to the hub, which in turn is just turning your rotor, driving your tire. So if we look here, you can see that there's a spline on the axle shaft. There's splines cast into the hub housing. So what a locking hub does is it basically allows the gate engagement between that center axle shaft and the outer hub. Now, if you had, say, a full-time four-wheel drive system, what it would use in here is a solid puck. Uh, this truck was originally a full-time four-wheel drive, and it just had a bronze puck that permanently connects the axle shaft to the hub, uh, thus turning your wheel all the time. Now if we come down here, I have a worn standard hub that I'm going to be installing in this truck right now, or reinstalling in this truck I should say. And as you can see it's in two pieces. This section right here is the part that actually does the connecting, and this right here is your control or engagement tab which has your selection range, lock, unlock or lock free in this case. And all that this does is it allows the axle shaft, which is engaging these splines right here, to free spin. Now when you twist that knob on that lever, it pushes that piece in, which in turn pushes this gear in to your locking hub, which locks the axle shaft to the outer wheel hub, thus driving your tire. So if we turn this hub over, this locking hub over, you can see it's got some splines cast into it right here. Those splines engage these in your hub. So that's how a locking hub works. The advantage of it here is, at least in my situation being an off-road truck, if I were to break an axle universal joint or shear an axle shaft, I can disengage the drive between the axle shaft and the hub and drive home. 
Um, that would be the great advantage here. If you're in a plowing situation or, or a winter situation or sometime in a vehicle where you're always going to want four-wheel drive, those drive flanges or drive pucks, those bronze ones that you use for a full-time four-wheel drive, would be actually pretty nice because then you never have to hop out and lock and unlock the hubs. So that's how a locking hub works. They're very, very simple. Um, and the purpose really is to allow you to disconnect the drive from your axle shaft to your wheel. And by disconnecting that, you are saving wear on your front universal joints, your ring and ping gear, your front drive shaft. Um, and it also should save you a little bit of mileage, uh, miles per gallon, because the um, hub itself being disconnected, disconnecting the wheel from that drive axle is not turning all of those components and not running through all that fluid and, um, you know, uh, bearing resistance and things like that. It's not going to save you a ton of mileage, but it will save you a little. It also saves some stress on your transfer case as well. So that's uh, locking hubs. There's nothing really special about them. Like brands like the Warren Premium, it's a little bit nicer hub. This is just their standard. But if somebody's going on and on about them having worn hubs or or super winch premiums or something, it's not really that big a deal. Um, they're really nothing special. Again, all they're doing is connecting that drive axle shaft to your outer wheel hub. It doesn't do anything more. It's not a locking differential. It does not distribute power to the wheels. Nothing special like that. It just allows free wheel action or engaged action when you want it. Now the drawback to a locking hub over a solid brass puck is that if you're in a, or a drive flange, is if you're in a four-wheel drive situation, you can actually strip these out. That slide gear right there will actually strip out and, or you'll crack your hubs or whatever you do to them. And in that circumstance, it'll allow your axle shaft to spin freely, not engaging your outer wheel hub. And thus you will not have four-wheel drive. So that's locking hubs, guys. Uh, real easy to convert. Also, again, if you have a full time four wheel drive, they do make uh, you can oftentimes, if it's an internal hub like this, you can just go out and buy any internal hub and put them in. Pretty simple. Also, great replacements for auto locking hubs, especially on these older GM vintage ones. The auto locking hubs kind of suck. Um, they put a lot of shock load on your U joints and things like that. Now, the uh, external hub design like what you find on older vehicles or some Dodges they do make conversions for those as well companies like Warren, Mile Marker, Super Winch um, all the Yukon now is making them so everybody's pretty much making hub conversions if that's something you want to do I know I've been asked a question about it so there you go guys locking hubs how they work very simple um, nothing special and I uh, should have a few more vids coming out soon thanks for watching bye